Today, I'd like to introduce you to our positron or antimatter emitter. It's a solution of sodium-22. For historical reasons, radionuclides are still measured in Curie activities. On February 2020, the activity was as high as 2 megabecquerel, which is extremely high. That's why it's stored in this lead light container to at least shield some of the radiation. However, even in this lead container, the solution emits a very high dose of radiation. At the time of the recording, on August 16th, 2023, the activity was approximately 0.8 megabecquerels. More precisely, 784,620. Becquerels, so not even half of what it was. Between 2020 and 2023, more than one half-life has passed. So it's not 2 megabecquerels, but rather 0.8 megabecquerels. Sodium naturally occurs as sodium-23, such as in the most common form of table salt. This means that sodium-22 has an axis of protons. In the beta plus decay, one of this proton is converted into a neutron, transforming sodium-22 into neon-22 and emitting a positron. The positron is the antimatter counterpart to the electron. During the sodium decay, whether it's beta plus or electron capture, an excited neon-22 nucleus is formed, which emits a 1274 kilo electron volt gamma ray to reach its ground state. The probability of this high energy gamma ray is 99.94%. So there is a 0.06% chance for that beta plus decay to directly go into the ground state of neon 22. This 1274 kilo electron volt line should be visible in the gamma spectrum. I'm going to place the solution with the lead container into the detector to avoid frying our detector completely. The unfiltered activity would lead to an absurdly high dead time. We can indeed see the 1274 kilo electron volt line quite well, but we can see even more clearly the annihilation radiation at 511 kilo electron volts. Now there are two reasons why the 511 line is so much more pronounced. The most important reason is that the emitted positron, which is released in 90% of the decays, definitely encounters an electron and briefly forms positronium before annihilating. During this process, two 511 kilo electron volts gamma rays are emitted. So the occurrence probability of the 511 line due to the decay is twice as high as the 90% probability of the positron creation. So it's 180%. That's definitely higher than the 99.94% probability of the 1274 kilo electron volt line. In addition, the 1274 line itself is energetically high enough to undergo pair production. With more than 1022 kilo electron volts of energy, it can produce within the detector when it comes near to an atomic nucleus, in this case of a germanium atom, an electron-positron pair and the resulting positron can annihilate with an electron giving rise to two 511 kilo electron volts gamma quanta. So to summarize, there are two reasons why the 511 kilo electron volt line is so much more pronounced. Annihilation radiation from direct positrons from the beta plus decay of sodium 22 and pair production of the high energy 1274 kilo electron line within the detector. With that being said, goodbye.